In this video, I rank 17 six-cylinder engines in production today from 14 manufacturers. They fall into four tiers, though the specific order that I present them reflect how I consider them relative to each other within each tier too. The top six-cylinder engine in my book is the Porsche MA2.75 4-liter naturally aspirated Boxer 6. This engine is exclusive to the 992 GT3 and uh, its special variants. It is also the only naturally aspirated unit on this list, as well as the one with the largest displacement. This severely over square engine can rev to 9K. It features individual throttle bodies. As a high performance engine, it uses rigid rocker arms. It has large bearing diameters and uh, plasma coated cylinder walls. As usual, the MA2.75 uses dry sump lubrication. The Ferrari F163 is also a unique engine, being the only 120 degree V6 on this list. It has a crazy specific output in excess of 210 horsepower per liter. The 120 degree bank angle is chosen for the best airflow while fitting the turbos as close to the head as possible in hot V setup. It also lowers the center of gravity. Ferrari uses ultra high pressure 5000 PSI direct injection. Maserati's Nettuno V6 is arguably even more advanced than the Ferrari F163 also achieving over 200 horsepower per liter. It uses several F1 technologies that can't be found elsewhere in a road car. The most interesting is the pre-chamber design. The pre-chamber is a tiny combustion chamber on top of the combustion chamber with a central spark plug in it. It dramatically increases efficiency and reduces knock. This engine also features twin spark ignition to address low load operations with a pre-chamber as well as twin injection system with both direct and port injections. If it weren't for Maserati's disreputation in reliability, this engine would be the number one on this list. Alfa Romeo's 690T is considered inspired by the Ferrari F154 V8 with many similarities in design. He also shares many design characteristics with the Maserati Nettuno. Like the Nettuno, it uh, has a 90 degree bank angle and an even firing order. While direct injected at launch, during its production Alfa Romeo added port injection. Unlike the Nettuno, the 690T uses wet sump lubrication. It is a superb engine that is not perfect in terms of reliability. The BMW S58 is a high-performance M engine that uh, replaced the S55. It uses a twin-turbo setup with forged internals. Like most European engines today, it comes with plasma-coated cylinder walls. Unique to BMW is the Volvotronic variable valve lift technology. To be honest, however, I fail to understand how a turbocharged engine could benefit from this complex system over individual throttle bodies. The S58 is found in a broad range of M and Alpina vehicles. It's probably the most reliable BMW engine in over a decade. Mazda's Skyactiv X is another contender for the most advanced engine on this list for it is the world's first commercial petrol engine with compression ignition. It uses an astounding 16.3 to 1 compression ratio and runs much leaner than other, other petrol engines. Specifically, Mazda uses spark-controlled compression ignition. It compresses a very lean air-fuel mixture until it is about to detonate. A second injector then sprays directly onto the spark plug to ignite the fuel. Interestingly, if we think about it, this system is quite similar to the pre-chamber design in racing engines, though without the pre-chamber. The inline-four Skyactiv-X engine has been a commercial success, 
we can exp expect the inline six variant to be equally well received. Nissan's VR engine is a series of twin turbocharged V6 engines. Launched in 2007, it was extremely advanced for its time, though by today's standard, it is a raw performance engine. The VR38DETT is the top variant found in the R35 GTR. The more approachable variant uh, is the uh, VR30 with the Infiniti Q50 and the Nissan Z as the most common. These are affordable cars with great performance and uh, good reliability. This rounds out Tier 1. Beginning with Tier 2, I have Ford's second-generation EcoBoost V6. If I had made this list two years ago when the Ford GT was still in production, the EcoBoost would, would have certainly made it to Tier 1. However, Ford had uh, discontinued the car and this engine is mostly found in boring vehicles. Ranging from 2.7 to 3.5 liters, the V6 EcoBoost now features both direct and port injections. It is reasonably robust, with some manufacturing defects that seem to pop up from time to time. The 9A2 EVO engine is an evolution of the 3-liter and 3.7-liter twin-turbo Boxer 6 found in the 991.2 Porsche 911. As uh, it is the case with other European engines, it uses plasma-coated cylinder walls. As one, can, as one can imagine, this is a very complex engine that features piezo injectors and uh, asymmetrical valve strokes. The latter supposedly improves the swirling effect that promotes air fuel mixing. The B58 is BMW's current crop of inline six engine family. Fortunately, it can be considered no more complex than the N55 that uh, preceded it. With a closed deck design, the B58 is thought to be a lot more robust than other BMW engines, if not all German engines built in the last decade. Still, as a common engine, the B58 has many points of cost cutting and can be improved with uh, aftermarket parts. The most interesting variant of the B58 is the B58B3001 found in M40i models and uh, the Toyota Supra. Rounding out Tier 2, we have Mazda's Skyactiv G 3.3 liter inline 6. This is a new, unproven engine. However, Mazda has a great track record in recent years in terms of engine reliability and I'm partial to an inline 6. It also helps that uh, this inline 6 doesn't come with hybrid systems. Only time will tell whether the 3.3 liter Skyactiv G deserves this spot or perhaps should be moved even higher. Starting with Tier 3, I have Toyota's V35A 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. By all accounts, this is a highly reliable engine. In proper Toyota fashion, it uses no groundbreaking technology and is not particularly powerful. Still, for consumers, it may very well be a winner in the long run if Toyota's reputation for durability and ease of maintenance bears out. In fact, the performance figures of the V35A are better than that of the BMW B58. The reason I put it in Tier 3 is because this engine is only found in boring cars. We shouldn't blame Toyota, however, as it still uses naturally aspirated 2URGSE V8 in the Lexus RCF IS 500 and LC 500. I'd put that V8 above every single engine on this list. GM's fourth generation high feature V6 is a range of modern engines with good reliability record and decent performance. It also forgoes groundbreaking features but trades that for affordability and ease of service. The more interesting variant is the 3 liter twin turbocharged unit found in the CT5V, not to be confused with the CT5V Black Wing, which features the LT4 supercharged small block V8. As I have said about the Toyota 2UR, 
I'd again put the LT4 above all engines on this list. The J30AC is the last six-cylinder engine by Honda that is not in a motorcycle. Used in exclusively in the Crura Type S models, it is a decent performer with good reliability. In fact, much of the same that I said about the V35A and the high feature V6 can be said here, though the output is even lower and the cars that come with it more obscure. Finally, we start the bottom tier with Volkswagen's EA A39. It comes in both 3 liter single turbo and 2.9 liter twin turbo variants. The performance features of the 3 liter units is lackluster compared to engines that I've talked above. Uh, the, the ones with the 48 miles hybrid system are quite troublesome. The 2.9 unit uh, has better performance. Unfortunately, it also seems to suffer from many durability problems, especially in the timing and the valve train areas. Another German disappointment is the M256 from Mercedes. When they first launched, I was excited to see another German, another company moving away from V6 to inline 6. However, time has revealed that uh, the M256, while having a robust rotating assembly, suffers from the jury German complexity. Most notably, many M256s comes with the 48-volt uh, mild hybrid system that is very troublesome. Many that, doesn't come, that don't come with the 48-volt uh, system are fitted in uh, hybrid vehicles. On top of all these, the current crop of Mercedes vehicles are not very interesting to enthusiasts at all. Finally, we have the Jaguar Land Rover Ingenium AJ300 inline 6. Jaguar has a long history with decent inline 6 engines. While this unit is still new, I'm confident that uh, the AJ300 will be proven to have a strong rotating assembly. However, Jaguar and Land Rover are never known to have good electronics. Unfortunately, this engine is only fitted in cars with mild hybrid or plug-in hybrid systems. In fact, they're only fitted into boxy SUVs. To me, these two points leave the Ingenium AJ300 last on this list. Perhaps time will be kind to it, and uh, we'll see.